Hey everybody, Milk and Banana here, and welcome to devlog number 3 of the FPS Toolkit devlog series. For this devlog, I actually was able to make a devlog in time because in the last devlog, I didn't really have enough time to make anything because I had a bit of technical issues with using Godot Engine. And I'm actually gonna break it down as to what were my problems with the engine and why I decided to roll back to 3.4 for the toolkit. So one of the big problems that I encountered while making this toolkit was I didn't really know how to approach the sort of demo world that I wanted to build for the toolkit. I initially wanted it to be some kind of portal-esque aperture science facility where you can do tests and sort of showcase all the features from there. And I started working on it and I actually even posted it on Discord about my progress on it. And it turned out pretty well. I was able to make something that looks semi-decent and although there were a little bit of technical issues here and there, I was able to make something that has a bit of a vibe. But this is kind of where things just started to roll downhill because I didn't really have any concept art to work with. I didn't have any solid idea of what to do. The basic functionality of the the toolkit is not even fully implemented in this stage and so for this one I was just kind of throwing the shit and I didn't really know where to take it. That and the fact that it just plainly crashed on me one day and I was not able to open the project. I was attempting to make it work by clearing the Godot files, the import files that I had and in the end it just ended up not working. Luckily I was able to encounter this problem early in the development because I actually was sort of hesitant in making the FPS toolkit in Godot 4 in the first place, especially that there were a lot of changes in terms of code that I have to relearn, but other than that, I'm actually kind of glad that I don't really have to work with it anymore. I am still kind of sad because there's a lot of features in Godot 4 that I really want to work with, like for example, the sort of real-time global illumination that they've implemented, or the decal system which would make like the bullet hole thing of a jig really easy, also just the general particle effects. And I will still try to make a port for Godot 4 while I'm currently developing it in 3.4, but for now, I'm still gonna stick to 3.4 for the rest of the development process. In terms of the actual functionality of the toolkit, I was able to finish most of the basic settings for the movement panel. As I said in the previous devlogs, the movement panel is kind of like the big ol' mama in terms of the functionality for this toolkit. And so making sure that the movement panel functionality is working as well as intended is kind of the big thing that I want to make sure of in making this toolkit. And so I've decided to just sort of buckle down and make a lot of the functionality in the basic settings and I was able to sort of get there. I still haven't made the grabbing settings sort of finished and I also don't have the gravity settings sort of nailed down yet because I have a couple of functionalities that I still want to add in. But aside from that, it's basically just a drag and drop system for the camera settings and the movement settings, which I really like. Another neat functionality that I added is to really a drag and drop experience. So you can now just actually instance the module to a kinematic body and it will automatically make all of the like collision shapes and the camera and all that stuff for you. That way you don't have to mess around with a lot of the stuff that I had to deal with where you have to make a collision shape and you have to set up a camera and all that stuff. You don't need any of that anymore. Instead, all you can do is you can just drag and drop it on a kinematic body and you're good. I'm planning to have this philosophy in a lot of the modules that I'm going to be creating from now on because I feel like having that ability to just literally drag and drop the modules into the parts in Godot is kind of like the dream scenario that I want in my head. It is also very accessible for beginners because all they really need to do is just instance it and then it just works out of the box. In other news, I actually made some different functions that I added into the movement panel, especially because it's the biggest one out of the toolkit right now. And one of the things that I implemented is a display setting for the panel. Because one of the things that is pretty apparent when I was trying to make this was the ability to customize what you see in the editor. And so far, the movement panel is kind of just a big mishmash of whatever I want to work on and it doesn't really have a way to actually customize how it looks. 
Especially that a lot of developers don't really need all of these functionalities that I'm gonna be adding. And so having a way to just clean up the editor and just remove all of the functions that you don't really need is pretty much what I added here. As you can see, there's just booleans that you can just hide and show specific features of the movement panel. So for example, if you don't want to see the advanced settings panel, then you can just untick that box and you should be good. In terms of the environment that I want to put this toolkit in, I don't really have a specific thing in mind. So if you have any ideas that then let me know in the comment section below if you have any visual reference that I can go by or if you guys just want to stick with the original style that I had with the Godot FPS template then also let me know. But as of right now, there isn't really anything that I can work with in the environment. Plus, I really want to make the environment sort of a module in it of itself. So right now, I don't really have that as my priority. In terms of what I want to finish next week, I want to make sure to finish all of the basic settings. I want to make sure that that is pretty much solidified and I also want to start working on the more advanced settings in the movement panel because having the basic settings finished is basically just saying that everything about the FPS toolkit is practically done like if a developer is able to get this build they're able to make at least the most basic of FPS like games there's no shooting yet so it's technically not a shooter game but still you can practically get going. Well, that about wraps it up for today's devlog series. I hope you have enjoyed it. If you have any feedback, then let me know in the comment section below. My social media links are in the description. And as always, I'm Milk and Banana, and I am out.